how do you know that God has given you the land? So I want to kind of pick up where we left off last time about God uh, giving us uh, land and territory and how to take the land. And I talked about getting a word from God. I want to talk to you about getting clear direction from headquarters. In Exodus 33, uh, 15 and 16, the, uh, Moses said to the Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, do not bring us up from here. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets our people and, and me apart from all the other people of the earth. So what is Moses saying? He said, God, if you're in this and you're leading me to to take the land, because that's what was happening. You're leading me to take the, 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 the promised land, the property. And this is you leading. Uh, I need you to confirm it. And I need you to make sure you you go with us. Because if you don't go, we're not moving. And that's the kind of attitude that we need to have. Lord, if you don't, uh, uh, George, George uh, asked, how can I be a partner? George, if you click there, um, it says uh, jasonlozano.org slash partner. You click there, you can partner there. Also, there's many ways to click links on the description. You can click those, Z uh, Zelle, Vimeo, Pushpay, uh, Square, and Cash App, and all these different ways you can give. Again, I got a lot of these computers in front of me, so I'm trying to figure it all out, but I'm getting good at it. Come on now. These guys are training me, so this is pretty good. Technology is amazing. We can preach the gospel all over the world right from anywhere, really. So it's a blessing. So again, thank you for your interest in partnering. partnering. Now, uh, again, we're talking about Moses. And he's like, if your presence doesn't go, if basically, if you're not going to be with us, if you're not in this, I don't want anything to do with it. And it, whether it's taking land in physical land, career land, um, relationship land, whatever the land you're believing for, you know, the reality is you want to make sure the Lord is with you on your endeavor. And this is where I like, I like to say this. We want to write this down. Uh, this is a powerful this is a powerful concept right here. We can't be led by opportunity because a lot of people are led by opportunity and not every opportunity is the Lord. Sometimes the enemy will bring you opportunities that look like the Lord, but they're not the Lord. We're not led by fleshly ambition. And that is a big one because a lot of times, People have secret fleshly ambitions that have been in their heart since childhood and they become motivators. And many times it's really secret fears. Maybe the, they want approval of men. Maybe they want uh, 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 the, uh, 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 the accolades that come with certain levels of success. But I'm going to say something that maybe not be pop, might not be popular, but it's powerful. You got to die to fleshly ambition because if there's fleshly ambition, now there's godly ambition, but there's also fleshly ambition. And the danger with it is, is it, in that world, you can be deceived and because you can be led by your flesh versus led, led by your spirit. So you really want to challenge, like, why do I, why do I want this land? Why do I, why am I believing? Is there, is there pride there? Is there ego there? You know, cause those are dangerous things. And as you grow in the Lord, you'll, you'll find yourself realizing more and more, no matter what you accomplish for God, you have to understand God will get all the glory, all the credit, and you don't own anything. In the end, you're just a steward of everything that God blesses you with. So I just need you to get a hold of that because we're not led by opportunity. We're not led by fleshly ambition. We're not led by ego or deception. We're not even led by comfort. We're not led by pride. We're led by the Spirit of God. You see, and once we have a word from God, direction from God, and we have confirmation, it's so powerful because now you have access to whatever God says is yours. God tells him, hey, take the promised land. And even in this instance, God gave him the promised land and he gave him access. But then that fe that old fear, that old fear, unbelief, discouragement came in. There's giants in the land. You can't do it. You don't have the money. You don't have what it takes. See, but when you have a, gr a clear word from headquarters, clear direction, confirmation, now that gives you that confidence, that gives you that boldness. I'm going to talk to you further about this as we go on in this program today. But the word of the Lord guarantees the Lord's presence will be with us. The direction from God guarantees that the Lord's presence will be with us. Say you're wanting to start um, courting a girl or a guy and you're going to go out with him. And you want to you make sure, 
um, that's what the courting process helps to do too. Like, hey, make sure this is the Lord. And you pray through it and you, and you seek God because you want to make sure it's from the Lord or anything that you're going to make a step of faith toward. You want to make sure the Lord is in it because when the Lord is in it, it guarantees success. Because wherever the presence of the Lord is, everything he is, is there. Let me say that again. Wherever the presence of the Lord is, wherever the direction of God is, he's, he's going to be there. His presence is going to be there. Everything, everywhere the presence of the Lord is, he is there. And when he's there, his favor is there. Come on. Favor. His provision is there. I feel the presence of God now. His strength is there. His success is there. His health, his protection and victory. Why protection? Why victory, pastor? Because the truth is the enemy does not want you to take land. Any kind of land. He doesn't want you to own that land because when you own that land and you occupy, then God occupies. And people taught this to me for years and I didn't understand it until we started really buying property. Because for years I just ran it, ran it, ran it, ran it, and then and then as a church we started buying, and personally I started buying properties. But what I learned is the enemy doesn't necessarily mind you renting a property. He minds you purchasing that property, because now that title deed belongs to the kingdom of God. And when you start wanting to take land in your family and, and physical land, you want to start possessing for God. Man, you're going to go into warfare because the enemy doesn't want you to own it. Because if you own it as a steward, then now God can run that land through you. See that? Now, we know God owns everything, but in the sense of who's occupying that land. Because if an evil person's occupying that land, then evil will be done there. But if God's people occupy the land, then God's will will be done there. So it's very important that you understand that you want to get a clear word from God because there's going to be warfare attached to you taking land. There's going to be a battle attached to you taking land. And the enemy doesn't want it. But if you got a word from God, the presence of God, the favor of God, the provision of God, the strength of God, the success, the health, the protection, the victory of God is with you. So that's why the Proverbs said it this way, 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Okay, that? But in all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Now, when I say trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Now, there's, there's something I want to say here real quick and then we're going to move on. There's a scripture in the Bible where the early church was making decisions. And they said something very interesting. They said, it seemed good to us and to the Holy Spirit. So you find that when God starts leading, it's gonna, it, there's going to be a confirmation with your us. So it seemed good to us. Now, the, this is powerful. I bet you've never heard this before. But who is your us? See, you, you got to have an us. It seemed good to us and the Holy Spirit. So in my life, before I go to take a faith step and to take land and territory, to start a business, to start a new business, to buy property, to, to, to further the kingdom of God. Before I take these steps, I really consult the Holy Spirit, of course, but then I also have my us. See, and in the, in the early church, the us wasn't just anybody. It wasn't just the entire church. It was the eldership of the church. It was the apostolic government of the church. These were men who had been seasoned, men who had been through battle, men who had obtained, men who walked by faith and were currently walking by faith and seeing the results. That was the us. And so you want to find yourself some us's and you want to bounce what you're feeling God is saying to you. I'm, this is going to save somebody's life. You want to bounce that off your us's. Because you're looking for confirmation. See, a lot of people nowadays are like, and it's been like this for years, to be honest. Uh, the Lord spoke to me. But then when you tell people who are spiritually minded, this is what the Lord says. If all of them are like, well, that's kind of weird. That doesn't make sense. The Lord's probably not in that. Come on now. See, but this is where we have a problem. Because 
We don't have no us's in our lives. How many people have wasted years of their life because they never consulted their us? It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Who is your us? And this brings a plethora of challenges because now we're talking about who do you look to for mentorship, discipleship, who speaks into your life. The, the, the church was created to be governed by authority, not abuse, not manipulation, but authority. There has to be government. God built this to protect his people. And so what I do is I take what I feel the Holy Spirit is talking to me about, a decision that's going to affect for me thousands, hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of people. And I present my what I feel the Holy Spirit is talking to me, I present this to my us. I have a, a tight organization of a few men of God who are my us. And I say, this is what I feel from the Lord. I have my board. I have great men of God globally. And I also have my wife. Come on, somebody. And I bring that to them. And I say, what do you think? And then I even bounce ideas off my own staff, people that work under me, people that would be under my authority. I still present it to them to say, what do you think about this? Well, pastor, you don't need to do that. That's not the point. The point is if it's God, spiritual people will agree. Spiritual people will confirm. Not natural people, not untested people, not people that are not proven to walk by the word of God. No, people who I trust, who have integrity, who've produced in the kingdom, I present it to them. How many times have I seen people go do their own thing or leave this church and they're going to go do this and they're going to go start that and it never pans out and they end up shipwrecked and they mess up their families. They mess up their family bloodlines. Oh Lord, I'm talking now. See, you start making bad decisions, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna shrink confidence in your marriage. Your, your spouse is not going to trust you. Your kids are going to go in the direction of where you take them. You can't just do your own thing. You got to be led by God. Come on. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge or submit to God. And a lot of people say, well, I'm submitted to God. I'm submitted to God. How do we know you're submitted to God? How do we know? Because, you know, you start, man, that doesn't sound like God. And maybe you want to pray about that idea. But when people, as a pastor for 30 years, people have come to me and say, well, the Lord said, well, how are you going to argue with that? The Lord said, the Lord said, that's the cop out for many people. That's basically, I want to do my own thing when I want to do it. And I want zero accountability. Well, you're going to have a hard time being trusted with greatness. And one pastor told me this a long time ago, and it really, it really ch changed my life. He said, Jason, the more great people speak into your life, the more, the more God will trust you with. The less people, great people speak into your life, the less God will trust you. And what he was saying is accountability. It's very important. And now we're living in a society, nobody wants to be accountable. Nobody wants to be under authority. Nobody wants to submit their ideas. And once they find out you can use the, the, what I call the, the Lord spoke to me card, then they're pretty much gonna do whatever they wanna do. So I know this is tough. I know this is real, but this is lessons we have to learn. Because if we don't learn these things, many times we're gonna learn them the hard way. How many times have I found people that did their own thing, didn't submit their ideas to God or other, the us, and just kind of did their own thing, and how did it end up? I know people say, well, you're going to be this, and you're going to be blessed, and, and it's true, but you got to make sure you got a clear word from God. you got to make sure you got something straight from heaven, because that, my friend, is going to work every time, all of the time, and it will not fail. It doesn't matter what giants come your way. It doesn't matter what challenges come your way. It doesn't matter what kind of warfare comes your way. When the Lord's favor and provision and strength and success and help and protection and victory, when the Lord's presence is with you, you can't lose. You may go through a time and a season where it looks like you're losing, where it looks like it's not going to pan out, but it will always pan out the way God said it because God is not a man that he should lie. Somebody say amen. Now, let me keep sending your questions in. And, uh, well, this is a good one. Let me, let me, Janet asked, how can one break from selfish motives? Now, um, Janet, I think sometimes we have things in our heart we don't even know are there. And 
I think one of the ways is um, I, I like to ask myself in prayer, Janet, this is what I, when I'm making a decision, just, just the other day, uh, something came available and it looked like a great opportunity and everything looked right. We had everything to do it, but I, I didn't do it because when I went into prayer, I was like, no, nah, I don't feel like the mode is pure behind it. Um, I don't like the feeling of it. I, I just, I'm going to wait on that until, even if it is the Lord, I got to get that motive pure. So in the presence of God, in prayer, you re really want to check the motives, okay, for everything, um, because that's going to define, determine many times, am I being deceived? Am I being led by the wrong thing here? Um, so it's very important that we, in, and I say in prayer, uh, you know, spend some time with God and, and bring that land before the Lord and say, Lord, you know, why do I want this? Why, why, why is it in my heart? And sometimes you're going to find where the Lord says, well, that's my desire I put in you. And, and then that's the green light. And sometimes you'll say, you know, that's, that's you trying to show off or that's you trying to be important or that's you trying to get ahead of me. So that, that's very important. Um, so that was a great, great, great question. Um, Raina, how do you know when an opportunity, and then we'll, we'll, we'll answer these questions and I'm going to move on to point number two. I think it's really going to bless you. And God, it's, I preached a long time. It's already 15 minutes. We only have 11 minutes left. So I'm going to just keep going today. Is that okay? I feel fired up. Okay. How do you know when an opportunity isn't from God? Well, and I'm going to talk to you about that maybe in a bit here. But one of the ways you know that God's not in it, there's not, there's not a peace in your heart. There's, there's something that's not settled. Don't go against that. Don't. Wait until you have what I call the green light in your spirit. Because the candle of the Lord is your spirit. That's how God leads. Guys, a candle is something in the dark. You put the candle in the dark and then the candle in the dark can lead the way. Well, the Bible says your spirit is the candle of the Lord. So God will speak to your spirit about people, about situations, about opportunities, when, when, what is of him and what is not of him. One scripture says, you need no man to teach you because the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Now, I'm not saying that you don't need people to teach you because the Bible gave apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists. So not, some people get scripture and they make it say whatever they want. But what he is trying to say is the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. So you have the Holy Spirit in you and then the Holy Spirit in others that you trust and know. I talked about that earlier. Okay, um, Alexis says, how do you know the people around you are spiritually mind it. Well, the way you know it is by their fruit. You look at their lives, look at their priorities, look at their time, look, look at their schedule, look at what they've produced. That's one of the ways you know who you're dealing with. Jesus says you will know them, not by what they say. A lot of people talk real good, but you're going to know them by their fruit in their lives. What I like to say is what I like my life to look like their life say they're 10 years down the road or 20 or 30 or the end of their life. Like there was a beautiful funeral for a great man of God who, who went on to be with the Lord. And when I was talking to his son, I was like, man, that's, that's how I want my life to end. So that would be somebody that, you know, you, you'd want to follow or take advice from. And, uh, and so it's amazing because, you know, he's poured into his son and now his son's pouring into me. So it's a real blessing. That's, that's an awesome opportunity. So, um, the power, write this down. Number two is, if you can take land, the power of spending time in prayer and in his presence. You see, God gave these two things, the Bible says in Hebrews 6, 18 and 19, that cannot be changed. And God cannot lie. We who have turned to him can have great comfort knowing that he will do, that he will do, that he will do what he has promised. And this hope, this confidence, this expectation, this trust, is an anchor for our soul. It will never move. This hope goes into the holiest place of all behind the curtain of heaven. Say, so what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying is, when you have these words from God, you go into the presence of God and God will confirm it. God will strengthen you. And it becomes like an anchor to your soul. It brings hope. It brings an expectation. It brings trust. It brings confidence. It all comes from his voice. That's why the scripture says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your request to God and let the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, it will guard your heart, it will guard your mind in Jesus Christ. 
See, the enemy wants us to be divided into parts. The enemy wants us distracted, pre preoccupied with all these things that cause anxiety, stress, and life's pressure. But when you come into the presence of God and God, and you, you, you I love the way it says behind the veil. So what do you mean? That's the holy place. That's where you and I have to learn how to press into God and get, what I like to say, get past the flesh wall, the, the outer court, the, 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 get past the inner court, get into the holy place where the voice of the Lord is, where the presence of the Lord is, where he can strengthen you, where he can give you that supernatural peace, where you can come out of that place with that supernatural peace, with that, with that weapon of peace. That weapon of peace brings strength. That weapon of peace brings assurance. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Peace is a weapon. And you take, you take whatever it is coming against you and you bring it into the throne of God. You bring it into the presence of God. You, now it doesn't happen like in five minutes. You got to take time. You got to wait on the Lord. You got to set time aside, you know. You got to build your schedule out to spend time with God. And if you're a really wanting to succeed, then you got to learn to spend quality time in the presence of God. You know, spend 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. Some of you will have the time to spend three, four, five hours. I'm going to say this. Again, somebody, Alasia, thank you for giving. Galatia, thank you for giving. People are giving. God bless you. Um, Art gave. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, Mrs. Gaza gave, God bless you. I'm all caught up in here and I, I should be, you know, thank, thank you for giving. I just, I'm in the spirit right now. I'm gonna talk to somebody who has a great calling of God on your life. If you feel like God has called you and you have a great calling on your life, you're never gonna accomplish that great calling without a strong prayer life. Like, I'm just telling you right now, you may not be the most, mm, I feel the annoying. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I feel the presence of God. Um, you may not be the most talented. You may not be the most gifted. You may not have all the connections. But the truth is, either did Moses. Moses was an ex-murderer. Moses was had a speech impediment. Moses struggled, but when the presence of God and Moses' struggle came together, Red Seas opened up. Pharaohs had to bow their knee. Freedom had to come. Fall in love with the presence of God. Bring your request to God. Let him confirm it. Let them bring godly people into your life. My wife prayed for years, Lord, bring good men into Jason's life. And now I have some great, powerful men in my life who speak into my life. Prayer is the key. And when God gives you that peace in prayer, that's so you can fight that devil with. And if there's no peace, then you stop. And pray and get that all cleared up. Don't just keep going and going and going and going. No, no. Take a moment. Spend time with God. That's what Jesus said. Get, let's get away. Get away. Get away. Get away from the crowd. Get away from this. Let's, let's spend some time with the Father. Jesus modeled that for us. Before he chose his 12 disciples, it said he prayed all night. And some of you have a great calling from God. But you're going to have to pay the prayer price. Not just now, but you're going to have to pay it for the rest of your life. And that is the best price you can ever pay. Because that fellowship, that precious communion with the third part of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, loves to fellowship with you. Loves to lead you. Loves to guide you. Loves to strengthen you loves to love on you and he loves it when you love on him this is a relationship this is not a religion this is a deep relationship deep calling to deep
that God is calling his people in this season. Whoa, it's powerful in here right now. Let me drink a little bit of coffee because I'm, I'm feeling pretty anointed. <laughs> that, that, that really got me right there. Uh, that was for somebody. I don't know who you are, but I would take that to the bank. Yeah, that's powerful. Thank you, Lord. I just feel the anointing. Whew. I'm having a hard time talking talking right now. Um, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Um, how do you, Jordan Ross, how do you stay in prayer for long periods of time without being distracted? Jordan, that's an amazing question. Where are you from, Jordan? Let me know where you're from. That's a great, great question. Time and practice, Jordan. When I first started praying, um, I was in the recovery home. And, um, you know, they told me, like, hey, you got to pray an hour. And I was like, you guys are crazy. We need to talk to, like, there's nobody in the room. Like, there's nobody here. Like, you're going to talk to God. I'm like, but you can't see him. Like, I believed in him, but it was just like, what are you going to do for an hour? And then I did it. I prayed, not for an hour, for five minutes. I said, Lord, thank you for my salvation and for my sobriety. And for I prayed for my mom, I think, and my, my family. And that was it. And I went to bed after five minutes. And then they turn, and they, they would turn all the lights off and everything. And then they turned the lights back on. And they'd say, how did you do, you know? And I was still, like, getting off methamphetamine, so, you know. It means you know, when you're on drugs, you have to sleep. I haven't slept in years probably, so I needed a lot of sleep. So I thought prayer was great. Basically, it's a time to pray and then go to bed and then wake up. And then they're like, how, do, how was it? Do you want to do more? Can you do more? I said, I can do as long as you want. I can sleep all day like this. So, but I started out with five minutes, uh, uh, Jordan, from Laguna Hills. Five minutes, Jordan. And then five minutes became... 10 and then 10, 20 and then 20, 30, 40. And then it became after a while, I started falling in love with it, the presence of God. And then two hours, three hours, four hours. To be honest, Jordan, the church was birthed, Freedom City Church was birthed out of an eight hour prayer meeting um, that I would have at my home every Monday. And uh, Pastor JD was part of that prayer meeting, one of my pastors. But we would start or we get out of work around three, four, and then we just pray sometimes all through the night. And that's how freedom was born. And after a year of that, then the Lord gave me the word of the Lord. But that's how I started. And then you block out time too. You time block, like from this to this time block. And and then sometimes you could pray and then even have books like devotional books and then prayer. So you don't just have to pray through the whole time. Just, just different things you can do, like read books, read devotion. Uh, for me, like what I like to do is I'll have like 10 books and I'll read a chapter of each book because I like to get the different anointings that are on those ministers and then for prayer, for me, I've I've been doing it for so many years. I can just pray, 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 pray a lot. Um, and I love the presence of God. And you have to learn to love the presence of God. Once you taste and see that the Lord is good, yeah, it'll change your life. So, and I recommend this for marriages too. You know, like if you if you if you're a marriage, your marriage wants to really thrive. You know, be be a, a prayer couple. You don't necessarily have to pray together all the time. If you don't feel like you want to do that, but at least separately, like she goes and prays, you goes and go and pray and spend time and then you come together after. But make sure you have prayer at the center of that marriage. So the Bible says, and I gotta, I'm got i going to wrap this up, um, man. Again, a lot of you uh, are giving. Thank you. Just click the links in the description. Give all those ways. And then also you can partner with us. It's a blessing to partner. A lot of you leaders just partner every month. We'll just continue to bring this word forth. I'm going to close with this last word. Um, it's my, my last point. And, and that is, you know, on the journey to your promised land, on the journey there, uh, make sure that you stay thankful for the promised land you already have. So you have a promised land now. Hold on, let me do this real quick. I'm going to check this out. Okay, yeah. So enjoy today's promised land on our way to tomorrow's promised land. Because, you know, a lot of times... Like when I was bleeding for a wife, and I'm standing on the word for a wife. You know, I found myself like getting anxious, like, okay, when's it going to happen? But that's not how God wants us to live. When it comes to any area that I'm believing God for, you, you know, you, you, you want to make sure that you're not so caught up in what you're believing God for tomorrow that you're not being grateful for everything that God's given you today. Because you, you got to understand, the enemy has no answer for a grateful, humble praiser. So Deuteronomy 28, 47, the people of God got in trouble because they did not serve the Lord the right way. 
But we need to serve the Lord our God with a a heart full of joy and gladness for all the abundance of things which he blessed us with. So like today, before I got here, you know what I did? I drove by the first building, our first church building. It's a barbershop now. But I drove by there and I drove by the alley. It's so small. It's like tiny. But why do I do things like that? Because I want to make sure, yeah, I'm believing God for more buildings. I'm believing God for more property. I'm believing God for all kinds of things in the future. And I look at the future, it's blessings upon blessings. It's 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 favor upon favor. It's prosperity upon prosperity. It's opportunity upon opportunity. It's breakthrough upon breakthrough. The Bible said that God's going to bless us so much that our head's going to swim. So there's a great future. And we have a great future in God. And there's excitement. And there's, 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 I'm pumped about tomorrow. But I'm not going to wait till my breakthrough tomorrow to be blessed and joyful. I'm happy today on my journey to my promised land tomorrow. And so today, have, let your heart be full of joy. Remind yourself of what God has done in your life. Remind yourself of the goodness of God. Remind yourself, for some of you, for some of you, you shouldn't even be here. For some of you, you should have died a long time ago. But God had mercy on you. Some of you were the last person that you ever thought of that would be saved. And I don't know who this is for, but this is heavy. You know, you're struggling with depression right now or maybe even suicidal thoughts. Listen, if you want to come out of these things, one of the quickest ways to come out, stop focusing on what you don't have. Stop focusing on what you've lost. Stop focusing on the negative and start thanking God for what you do have. I always say it this way. You may not be where you want to be, But thank God you're not where you used to be. You're blessed today. Don't wait till tomorrow to have joy. I decree and declare your heart's full of joy today. You're grateful for all that God has done in your life. Thank God for every blessing. Count your blessings today on the journey to tomorrow's promised land where you're believing God for more than you've ever, ever had. And I say keep believing, keep pressing, but don't stop praising God. Don't stop being grateful for what he's done in your life today. So again, I pray this message blessed you. If this podcast has blessed you in any way, click the like, subscribe, notification bell if you want to get more information on this stuff. Again, feel free to, to donate, partner. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Like chat's blowing up. I love all of you. Look at this, this is blowing up. God is touching people's lives all over the world. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift this countenance upon you. May God give you favor. May God raise you up in a powerful way. And I decree and declare that on your journey to tomorrow's promised land, you're rejoicing all the way there. Pharaoh can't hold your joy back. Pharaoh can't hold your land back. Those giants have to let your land go. Love you and God bless you. Bye-bye.